it, it's interesting because caring about quality uh, in, in this context is like caring about quality both of ends and means. There's a sense of uh, design and craftsmanship um, going on here. Um, we want to have we want to have the things that we do to generate and uh, uh, manifest wisdom themselves have quality. I'm thinking largely in because of my own background, the, the care that is taken or can be taken in creating high quality conversations. Um, and that care can include having aesthetic spaces for people to talk in that has, uh, that has uh, uh, the nature present, um, a beautiful space, has enough space, has enough light, etc. It can include the, the design of questions people are asked, of the kinds of conversation they're going to have with each other. Uh, but there's a sense that there is an, there's an art to this, and we're going to take the time and attention to make that art and to celebrate it. Uh, and that's the means and the ends. I mean, to have a, uh, have a beautiful, uh, to have a beautiful space to live in, to have life-giving, wholesome spaces to, to uh, live in, to, um, I, my late partner, Karen talked about uh, how beauty could be a whole social change um, a movement uh, because poverty isn't beautiful and, uh, and war isn't beautiful and pollution isn't beautiful uh, and hate isn't beautiful. So if we, there's a way we could just focus on beauty and the quality, uh, attractiveness, life nurturingness of, uh, of whatever we're trying to create. Uh, so there's a funny way in which caring, if we're, if we're caring about quality, quality of what we do, the quality of what we're trying to create, uh, that's a big part of uh, having uh, broad benefit uh, to many, many people, many entities. Um, so we uh, recognize and value and nurture uh, art, skill, authenticity of expression, mindful attention to our engagement. So all are different. Are we having a, uh, a high quality, beautiful, uh, alive engagement with our partners, with our children, with our neighbors? Uh, to what extent do we take pride in engaging that way uh, with each other and with the situations we have? Is there, is there sort of a celebration if somebody if people are particularly capable of engaging with life situations, they have a certain presence and elegance about the way they deal with whatever's going on. They don't get all upset and, you know, uh, and flustered. They, they're there and they're, there's something, something amazing, attractive, awesome about how people like that go about living their lives and for us to be able to have those people around to celebrate them, to uh, try to imitate them, to have role models that are like that rather than role models that are violent and stupid. Uh, so this is a quality of attention. It's a little hard to imagine how to you know, bring that about except by modeling and encouraging it. But the, the sense of Wanting to have, uh, wanting to have a, a vibe of craftsmanship in everything that we do individually and collectively. Of course, we can't, we can't achieve that all the time. But to have that as a, uh, as something that we're striving for and celebrating when it happens. Uh, the Olympics are going on right now. Watching the, the, uh, the incredible beauty, the beauty and functionality, the combination of those two is part of the quality that I'm talking about. So like we think of the beautiful woven baskets and, uh, and ceramics of uh, certain civilizations and modern artists now. Uh, there's a combination of beauty and functionality. There's a movement for design, design in everything, design in architecture, design in creating, creating computers like the one I'm 
talking with right now and writing with. Um, the Macintosh was famous, the Apple products were famous for bringing design sensibility, not just in terms of functionality, but in terms of elegance uh, into the world of electronics. Um, and that, that if our functional things are beautiful and our beautiful things are functional, it's almost like that's the definition of the quality of life that we're seeking for ourselves and everyone else in future generations. How do we make a world that is more beautiful for our great grandchildren than the one we have now? It would be a very interesting question to ask and pursue. Um, so this is, this is caring, this is caring not just empathy for people, but caring into the quality of what we do and the outcomes that we are producing. And meditation is an interesting, uh, you know, to be able to train your mind and attention to, uh, to pay attention, to be present, uh, and to be appreciative. These are, these are capacities uh, that, that, that uh, encourage this caring into um, carrying into quality and having aesthetic spaces uh, to the extent we have in our, uh, in the workplaces, in governance spaces, in conversational spaces, to the extent that we um, promote aesthetics there, that does that too. All art, music, sense of craftsmanship, uh, people, you know, the, the, when people have particular gifts, uh, there are certain capacities, you could say that that they are more, you know, if, they, if they're a great artist, uh, if they have a natural bent towards art, um, they more naturally create beautiful things or things of quality. If they have a natural quality of leadership, they may will make, bring beauty to um, quality to their, to their leadership. They have whatever, it's almost like the word gift means that, what they are doing and bringing to the world is a gift, and there's something, some quality about that that is that is good. And so, from from the love, from the point of childhood, on, from uh, people who are quote unquote disabled or uh, considered limited in some way, like what is their gift? To recognize that, draw it out, uh, mentor it, develop it, enhance it, uh, so that people in general are expressing their best capacities uh, all the time, the extent that we can create social, uh, social contexts which evoke that and support that, uh, we, are, we are pursuing this quality, we're caring about the quality. This person may not have gifts in this area, so we're not gonna delve into that, we're not gonna spend a lot of time focusing on their shortcomings, we're gonna focus on their capacities, what they bring and celebrate that. Uh, Pattern languages themselves, that whole approach of doing pattern languages, this is just one of many pattern languages that exist. The idea of a pattern language is to look at what will, um, what will, what goes into calling forth what uh, Christopher Alexander, who founded pattern languages, what he uh, called the quality that has no name. And there's a funny way in which I'm, I'm, uh, when I say quality, I'm meaning that there's a wholeness, a spirit, and aliveness. Uh, the pattern language is looking at, here's this field, this area of human endeavor, um, and you can do it in ways that degrade life, or you do it in ways that enhance life. So let's look at the things that we can do that enhance the life in this particular realm. So this is about wise democracy and looking at how to generate the wise democracy. So the, pattern language itself is a tool. It's to guide our caring into activities that will generate the kind of quality I'm talking about uh, and design consciousness in all public affairs as well as in everything else. But to think that there's, it's not a matter of just doing this process and it will create this result. It's a matter of, you know, what can we do? How, what elements can we put in place? How can we uh, how can we meet our uh, our obligations and the possibilities of the situation uh, 
in a way that will generate this quality, have that conscious, not just going through the motions, going through so much public affairs as going through rote, uh, rote motions, but to have this design consciousness. So imagine a society where these things are, uh, are being supported and practiced all over the place. That's kind of a nice society to imagine living in. So those are all approaches I can see supporting this. <laughs>